Welcome to our worship service today. We're glad to have you join us. I am Pastor Tom Meyer, vacancy pastor at Christ the Cornerstone Lutheran Church in San Diego and also at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Poway. And we're glad to have you join us as we provide these services for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come before God, to whom all hearts are open, and from whom no secrets are hidden, and confess our sins in the name of Him who died and rose again to give us forgiveness in life. We take a few moments in silence to for personal confession. We, together we confess, Father in heaven, I confess that I have lived as if you did not matter, and as if I mattered most. Your name, O Lord, I have not honored as I ought. My worship and prayer have faltered. I have not allowed your love to move me the way it should, and so my love for others has often failed. There are many whom I have hurt, and many whom I failed to help. My thoughts and desires are soiled with sin against you and against my brothers and sisters. For the sake of Jesus Christ, 
I ask you to forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Suffering the full weight of sin on the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ has risen in victory with forgiveness and redemption to all who receive him. I have announced to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. O oh God, grant power to your people that we may love you and desire to do what you command. In the midst of many changes in our world, enable our hearts to be fixed on you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Candrake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. This is our scripture reading today. Our epistle lesson for today is recorded in the first epistle of John, chapter 3, reading there verses 18 through 24. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we, because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. For this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is our epistle lesson for today. Our gospel lesson for today is recorded in the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, beginning there at verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. 
He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. Please join with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last Sunday the Oscars were televised. I did not watch them and apparently not many other people did either. I heard that this was the lowest rated Oscars show in many, 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 many years. Instead I watched the Padres-Dodgers game which turned out to be very, very exciting as the Padres won in extra innings, and I enjoyed that probably a whole lot more than I would have enjoyed the Oscars. One of the things about movies is that you need to kind of know who the cast of characters is, and you also need to know the setting. In our Gospel lesson for today, where Jesus talks about vine and branches, it's important to know the cast of characters. Jesus is the vine. He is the source of life. We are the branches, and we get our life from the vine. And God, our Father, is the gardener who takes care 
of it all. His job is to take care of the vines and the branches and to prune that which is not producing the right thing. The setting of this particular story of Jesus is as they are making their way, they being the disciples, making their way from the upper room on Monday, Thursday, where Jesus has just instituted the Lord's Supper, and they're on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And I picture it a little bit as if Jesus is going along and they're walking by a vineyard and he stops and uses this moment as he does so often because he is a good teacher. He uses this moment to teach and to teach his disciples. And he uses the vine and the branches as his way of doing it. Vines grew abundantly in Palestine and if allowed to develop properly with a good gardener, a good tender of the vineyard, they would produce sweet bunches of grapes. But left unkept, they crept everywhere and into everything. And unlike pumpkins and squash, grapes do not do well growing on the ground. The gardener trims the vines. Why? so that they will bear more fruit. The analogy is fairly easy to understand. God trims us. Why? For the same reason. A good gardener will do what it takes to help the vine bear fruit. And what fruit does God want to see produced? Well, in the book of Galatians, we read the kind of fruit that the Spirit produces within us. And he comes up with this list, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit, and this is what God longs to see produced in us. And like a good gardener, he will clip and cut away anything that interferes with this. A good track coach, might go to a runner and say, I believe that you can set the record, but it's going to take this kind of work on your part in order to do that. And the runner probably is looking at that and sighs and says, oh, am I going to have to work that hard and discipline that much? Or a good piano instructor says, I think you can master this piece for the recital, but it's going to require that you rehearse a little bit more. And the recitalist and the pianist kind of looks at that and sees the hours required. God lifts up a vine and says, you can be fruitful, but I'm going to have to clip some diseased leaves. And this is what he does. And you can see the soil littered with those leaves that he is cutting away. Bad relationships, vain ambitions, dangerous life, opportunities that we shouldn't be pursuing, or revenge. God takes his job seriously. Look what verse 2 says in that gospel lesson. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. But all God also repositions some of those branches so that maybe they get more sun or more room so that the, the grapes can hang better and they develop greater, greater things. God also has to realign our lives at times. There are times when something happens that causes us to realign our lives and maybe get in better touch with our Father in Heaven. The sudden physical problems that might come our way can cause us to rely on the gardener. Someone can have their salary income decreased in significant ways and suddenly they are looking at self-reliance and leave it behind to draw closer to God. Or a person moves so that we are no longer under their bad influence. 
We read in the book of Ecclesiastes these words, that God does everything just right and on time, but people never completely understand what he is doing. Let me read that again. God does everything just right and on time, but people never completely understand what he is doing. Did I just hear some of you say, Amen? God is a good gardener, and who takes care of the vineyard. He removes the stones and constructs and repairs the trellises. He plants the seeds and pulls out the weeds. And most of all, because he is a good gardener, he takes care and loves the vine and loves what is produced. So what do we do? We branches on the vine. What is our response? How do we react? An answer frequently given at this point is, well, bear fruit. That kind of sounds like a right response. Think of the garden and it is a non-fruit bearing branch going to start bearing fruit if the gardener goes up to him and says, you start bearing more fruit. It probably is not going to work very well. Will you bear more fruit just because you're told to do it? Maybe, maybe if you really try harder and harder to do it, maybe, maybe then it'll happen. Do you think that'll work? Not likely. Maybe you have tried the process of gritting your teeth and trying to do better until you turned red in the face and it didn't really work and no fruit was produced. Today, I will be happy, you growl between clenched teeth. Or, I'm going to be patient and I'm going to do it right now. Or, okay, I'm going to be a cheerful giver. Just give me that stupid collection plate. Or, I'm going to forgive that guy even if it kills me. Or, I'm going to practice more self-control as you try to get those four cookies out of the cookie jar. You can't force fruit, even the spiritual kind. Nowhere does Jesus tell us to go out and bear fruit. Nowhere. Nowhere, that's right. Nowhere does he tell us to go out and bear fruit. Nowhere does he command us to bear fruit. Go ahead, look, it ain't there. What does he command us to do? Let me read a section of that gospel lesson again for you and see if you can't get what Jesus is really telling us to do. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. If you do not remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown away and withers. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, did you get that? Eight times in four verses, Jesus says, remain. Do you think he's trying to make a point there? Do you think Jesus is telling us that we need to stay close to the vine? That we need to stay close to him and that's where we will be fruitful? The branch does nothing. In fact, Jesus said this, apart from me, you can do Nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Ah, oh, come on, Jesus. You know, we can do some things apart from you, right? We can do a few things, right, Jesus? Apart from me, you can do nothing. So how do we remain close to Jesus? 
Well, it means that we worship him. We come to hear God's word and receive his body and blood in Holy Communion. We study where we can learn about God and, and learn about what he is revealing to us in his word and, and how he wants us to know that he is a God who loves us and cares for us. We fellowship with other believers as we share what it means to be a child of God and as we encourage and support and care for one another as we share our own personal burdens. And we confess. We confess our own sins and mess-ups and the failures that we have. We admit that we have a lot of garbage in our life and we hear the glorious news that because of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, we have eternal life and all of our sins are forgiven. All of the garbage is removed and taken away. We may not like some of the pruning that the gardener does in our lives, but know this for sure. He does it because he loves us and we will be better off for it. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, help us to remain in you, to remain close to the, to the true vine, to Jesus Christ and to his blessing and to his word and to celebrate his love for us each and every day. These things, O oh Lord, we bring to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, normally in our worship service, we would be having our offering. We encourage you to support the ministry of these two congregations by sending in your offerings and through the mail or online or whatever method you have. But whatever way, we thank you for your participation. Let us join in the prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, help us that we may abide in you and in your grace in order to yield the good fruit that you desire. Lord, because of your love. Hear our prayer. Father, give to your church and to all leaders of your church the wisdom, courage, and strength to yield fruit for your kingdom. Lord, because of your love. Hear our prayer. Lord, make us bold to share the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection to all people, that many may be drawn to new life in your kingdom. Lord, because of your love. Hear our prayer. Be with all who need your special healing and care, especially those whom we name in our hearts to you. Give them the power they need to remain faithful in their time of trouble and preserve them in eternal life. Lord, because of your love, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide all our leaders in the federal, state, and local level that they may serve well the public trust, lead all nations and all peoples in pathways of peace, justice, and freedom. Lord, because of your love, Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all our prayers and everyone for whom we have prayed, even ourselves. Hear and answer us according to the love you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give to you now and always his peace. Amen. Amen.